How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. We are back for another week and I hope every single one of you have had a really good weekend. But I suppose, of course, that depends on who you support. Um, on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the results over the course of the weekend. Some unbelievable results, some amazing goals, some controversy. And it's been a very, very interesting time and it's good to have proper football back and not the international break i represent my fucking self how we doing guys welcome to dt's daily that's right so before we get started with today's show get yourself over dtfc channel links in the description we've got a new video in there it's a little bit different from this one because of course we have no highlights uh, from last week's game as the game was actually streamed live. Um, so what we've done is our league game so far this season, we've put all of our goals in there. Only four league games at the time of us putting this together and 24 goals already. Um, of course, if you've seen the result from the weekend, we've added another seven to that. But for now, you get to see 24. Now, what I want you to do is go into the comment section and let me know your favourite goal. Throughout today, I will be over there, I will be commenting and I will be interacting. So very simple, links in the description, get yourself over and subscribe if you have not done so already. Now, let's take a look at the results from the course of the weekend. And um, wow, is all I can say. Um, the Premier League has just gone crazy and I know that it's always been exciting and I know that there's always been drama and whatnot but I tell you something this season has just thrown absolute madness in the air and I don't honestly think that anyone can predict what's going to happen anymore I think one of the worst things you could possibly do right now is try and put an accumulator on because how on earth can you predict some of these results? Mad. We'll get into Saturday's games. The big one starting off. Everton against Liverpool. The Merseyside derby. <sighs> what can I say about this? The fallout from this. 2-2 Two -two was the score. Um, now, the breakdown um, of trying to even get into the details of this game. Um, Richarlison gets a red card. Um, Liverpool score what they think is a perfectly good goal in injury time. Only for VAR to rule it out for offside. Now, I've had a look at it so many times. That is not offside. Just not in any way, shape or form. Um, Mane gave Liverpool the lead. Um, Keane equalised for Everton. Mo Salah with under 20 minutes to go. And then Dominic Calvert-Lewin doing exactly what he's been doing all season. Um, Richarlison getting sent off in the last minute. But I suppose the real big talking point as well, apart from that and the VAR, was the tackle on Virgil van Dijk. And I've had a look at this so many times and how on earth this is not a red card, I do not know. It's just an assault. It's like, wow. And the fallout from it is that Virgil van Dijk has sustained ligament damage to his knee. He's having surgery and he's going to be out for around about seven to eight months or so. That's a huge, huge loss to Liverpool. And I honestly just don't get that tackle. I really don't. And the repercussions of it, man. I know it's a derby and I know that, you know, there's passions and I know the intensity. And, but you can't be tackling like that, man. That's an assault. I'm sorry. It's as simple as that. I'm not a Liverpool fan. But if I was, I'd be absolutely fuming. If I'd lost Virgil van Dijk to that. But on the flip side, Liverpool fans, you can't complain about VAR. 
when you look at some of the decisions that have gone your way in recent weeks, we think about the game against Arsenal. First couple of minutes, Mane should have been sent off for the smash in the face of Kieran Tierney. So when you moan about VAR in the last minutes and everything else, swings and roundabouts. But the Virgil van Dijk, 100%. I agree with everything that you have to say with that because that's bad, really bad. Um, next up, we have Chelsea against Southampton and the game finished 3-3. What on earth happened in this game? Timo Werner scores a couple of goals, Chelsea in command. Southampton get a goal back and then Kai Havertz. And then the 94th minute, Southampton equalised. Why did I tell you lot about Frank Lampard? I warned you. He didn't listen. You thought I was delusional. You'll see for yourself, all right? Now he's got better players at his disposal. He will come unstuck and he will start to get exposed. And Roman Abramovich won't put up with it for long. Not a great result for Chelsea, especially as they were at Stamford Bridge as well. Um, next up, we have Manchester City against Arsenal. And I think I've said all I can say about this. I was very, very disappointed. I felt we were toothless in attack. I felt we paid too much respect to Manchester City and Pep Guardiola. They were there for the taking. Yes, there were some positives. Yes, it's a much improved performance against one of the top six sides in comparison to previous years. But the result still remains the same. We lost and we always lose against one of these sides. 29 games now. We've not done anything against one of these big top six sides. It's not good enough. It's an improvement, but still work to do. Um, next up, we have Newcastle against Manchester United. And Manchester United win this one 4-1. And I suppose when you say the scoreline, you think, wow, what a comfortable evening for Manchester United. But it was not a comfortable evening. Newcastle took the lead. Um, and everything just seemed to be going against Manchester United. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was under so much pressure. Harry Maguire, of all people, equalises. And then Manchester United got a penalty again. I'd be more surprised now if Manchester United go a game not getting a penalty, it's just become a joke. They get penalties after penalties. And uh, Bruno misses. Um, but with about five minutes to go, brilliantly worked goal for Manchester United. Bruno makes amends, 2-1. And then a couple of goals um, to add insult uh, to injury, shall we say, to Newcastle. And it makes the scoreline look a lot more flattering than it actually you know, was in terms of the game. But Manchester United, they go and get the victory. Uh, going into Sunday's games, <laughs> the drama just doesn't stop. My word, where do I start? Right, Sheffield United against Fulham. 1-1. Sheffield United get their first points um, of the season. And I suppose they'll be happy with that. But they nearly, nearly lost again. Um, Fulham actually took the lead with just over 10 minutes to go. Lookman um, looks like they had, you know, got that victory. And then um, Billy Sharp scores from the penalty spot with five minutes to go. And Sheffield United will feel happy that they've at least got a point on the board. But they've not had a great second season start um, in the Premier League. Crystal Palace against Brighton. That was also 1-1. And this was mad as well. Uh, Wilfred Sahar, penalty in 20 minutes, put um, Crystal Palace in front. And then Brighton equalised um, in the 90th minute. And then Lewis Dunk was sent off in the 93rd. So, um, yeah, a draw. And um, can't really say much more than that. Um, I will get onto this result in a second. I want to go to this one first. It was the later game of the Sunday. Um, but Leicester losing at home to Aston Villa. What a performance from Aston Villa and what a start they've had um, in the Premier League this season. And Ross Barkley with a 91st minute winner. And Leicester, since they've um, torn Manchester City apart at the Etihad, they've lost their last two. Who have they got next in the league? Arsenal. 
I'm not even going to get into that at the moment. Um, but yeah, that then leaves me on to the uh, final game. What on earth happened in this? Tottenham 3, West Ham 3. Now, let's try and get into this for you. Opening 16 minutes of the game, Tottenham were 3-0 up. Harry Kane scores a couple of goals. Human Son scores the other. They were battering West Ham. Half time. David Moyes obviously says something or throws something. I don't know what it was. But West Ham come out a completely different side. 3 1. 3 uh, 2. And then Bale, who actually came on at 3 0. Um has a chance to seal the game and puts it wide. And the other thing as well, I might not have mentioned, for some of you that may not have actually seen this result or realised, it was 3-0 until the 82nd minute. Eight minutes of normal time left. Tottenham were winning 3-0. And by the 94th, it was 3-3. Unbelievable. Balbuena goes and gets the ball rolling. Um, Sanchez own goal on 85. And then it looks like Spurs have weathered the storm. And like I said, Gareth Bale had a massive, massive chance. And he pulled it wide. And it looks like they weathered the storm. A free kick came in. They looked like they cleared it. Harry Winks then got a toe to it on the edge of the box. Looks like he was clearing it. And then Lanzini... Oh my God, what a goal. Top bins, bang, corner, stanchion, whatever you want to say. What a goal, 3-3. Free, free. And it doesn't matter how much Jose Mourinho tries, you can't take the bottle out of Spurs, can ya? <laughs> Imagine being 3-0 up with eight minutes to go at home. And you draw 3-3. Free free. <laughs> ah, lovely. Some of the images of Mourinho's face on the touchline when that third goal went in was just... Ah, beautiful. Um, but yeah, unreal. When you're looking at the uh, Premier League table, very, very interesting. Everton stay top. On 13 points. Um, <laughs> it's just like this table's mad. I'm looking at Arsenal, for example, and we've lost two games, but we're sitting on nine points and we're only four behind top. But we've been to the Etihad and Anfield. Crazy. We're ahead of Spurs, ahead of Chelsea, ahead of Manchester City. Ahead of Manchester United. You know, Manchester United's win means that they're up to 14th. Didn't really do that much for them. Um, but yeah, so far, it's not too bad. The table, you know, it's early. So you're not really going to see a lot. Um, Burnley right at the bottom. Um, but yeah, look, it is what it is. And... Um, We'll take it for now. As an Arsenal fan, like I said, we've already been to Anfield and the Etihad. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens in the coming weeks because we've got some big games. Leicester, Manchester United. They're the next two in terms of the Premier League. So, we will see what happens. So, there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think. What was your favourite game over the course of the weekend? What was the highlight? What was the low um, and like I said, get over to the DTFC page, links in the description. Throughout today, I will be commenting and I will be interacting with a load of you. So get yourself over there. And of course, make sure you subscribe. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe here. Um, make sure you leave your comments in the chat, like I was saying, and let me know what you thought about the games over the weekend. Um, and yeah, listen, I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.